once more the original problem of finding a formula to compute the n triangular number t sub n equal 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to n triangular numbers suggest by their name the idea of geometry and it should be interesting to try to apply some geometric reasoning to solve the problem as we explained in the first lecture triangular numbers are obtained when we arrange a number of stones in an equilateral triangular shape it just happens that it is convenient for us to rearrange those stones in another triangular shape, that is, triangle triangle. That way we are able to produce triangular numbers and it becomes very simple to arrange the stones in a two-dimensional array of stones that can be easily counted. Now we will see how the geometric demonstration works for T sub 4. First, we duplicate the number of stones, so we have 2 times T sub 4, and conveniently rotating the second T sub 4, we can join the first T sub 4, and we have as a result a rectangular shape. The number of stones in that rectangular shape is very easy to compute. It will be the product of the two sides, in this case 4 times 4 plus 1. So, since we have duplicated the original number t sub 4, now we need to divide 4 times 4 plus 1 by 2, and that will give us the value of t sub 4. The same procedure can be carried out for 100 stones or any other number. We do not suggest you do this literally for 100 stones, but you should be able to play this same argument in your mind. In the previous example, we were extremely close to form a square number. We actually missed this by just one row. That is why we had the 4 plus 1 factor. A natural question to ask is what should we add to any triangular number t sub k to get a square number? We can see it in the diagram. What we need to add is the prior triangular number. We can express this algebraically with the following relation t sub k plus t sub k minus 1 equal k square. What this formula is saying is that the sum of two consecutive triangular numbers is a square number. We can verify that this is true since t sub 1 plus t sub 2 equal 1 plus 3 which is equal to 4 and also t sub 2 plus t sub 3 equal 3 plus 6 which is equal to 9. It's easy to see from the geometric configuration why the sum of two consecutive triangular numbers is a square. Since t sub k is something we are interested in finding, then the relation seems to be also a kind of equation where the unknown to be found is t sub k. Notice also that t sub k minus 1 appears on the equation. Naturally, if we know how to compute t sub k, we also know how to compute t sub k minus 1. Equations of this type are known as recursive equations. The last row of t sub k would be the diagonal, and since subtracting the diagonal, the resulting triangular number is equal to t sub k minus 1, we can also write another relation t sub k equal t sub k minus 1 plus k. Now, these two equations are defining t sub k in terms of a prior triangular number t sub k minus 1. This type of relations are called recurrence equations and we will discuss them in more detail in some other lecture. For now, let us try and see if we can solve the first equation t sub k plus t sub k minus 1 equal k square with the initial value t sub 1 equal 1. It's easy to see that since t sub k plus t sub k minus 1 equal k square, then t sub k must be represented by a polynomial of second degree. Furthermore, if we use k equal 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., and we find the values of t sub k 1, 3, 6, 10, etc., plotting the points 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 6, 4, 10, the curve we draw looks like a parabola. Since parabolas are expressed by polynomials of second degree, so let us make the assumption that t sub k is a polynomial of degree 2. The general equation for a polynomial of second degree is t sub k equal 
a times k square plus b times k plus c. From the equation, t sub k plus t sub k minus 1 equal k square, we know that c must be equal to 0, because otherwise t sub k plus t sub k minus 1 equal k square could not be true. There would be some constant value on the right hand side of that equation. So now we have managed to simplify the equation to something simpler. t sub k equal a times k square plus b times k. But we know some of the values for t sub k. That is, we know that t sub 1 is equal to 1 and t sub 2 equal to 3. So replacing those values in the recurrence equation, we get the system of two linear equations. t sub 1 equal a plus b equal 1 and t sub 2 equal 4 times a plus 2 times b equal 3. And we can easily see that a equal b equal 1 over 2 satisfies the system of equations. Replacing a and b in the quadratic polynomial, we get that t sub k is equal to k plus 1 times k over 2. To solve that recurrence equation, we had to do some work because we failed to notice that was a lot easier by using both recurrence equations together we get a system of recurrent equations and it just happens that this system is very easy to solve. t sub k plus t sub k minus 1 equal k square and t sub k minus t sub k minus 1 equal k and adding them we get 2 times t sub k equal k square plus k and so t sub k is equal to k plus 1 times k over 2. This illustrates the fact that sometimes the easy solutions are right in our nose. We just need to see them. These solutions are a bit harder to get than Gauss' ingenious solution, but they do provide insight into some other topics that we will develop later. We have shown in these three lectures, starting with a problem of finding the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 100, and then generalize the problem a bit more to 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n. This sum defines the nth triangular number. From there, we move once more to finding the sum of n terms of an arithmetic progression. We were able to find an invariant that allows us to obtain an easy proof on each case. Finding invariants is a very strong method of problem solving. Many times in mathematics, the normal path of discovery of new results starts with a small particular case and later one is able to find generalizations. It's like the painter first drawing a sketch with a pen before the painting. There is also a misconception about mathematics. Many think that to make mathematical discoveries, you need to be a full-fledged mathematician. Actually, it would be of help, but there are still many elementary results to be discovered and usually research mathematicians will not spend time on those. 